but if you want the hard truth about any course they never really ask me about my marks so actually a counselor like help me apply like i didn't have to sit and apply to each unique hello guys my name is deepak james from college dunia and uh, today we are here for another episode of college dunia student connect and today we have ashley with us welcome ashley so why don't you tell us something about yourself well first of all thank you for having me here a little bit about myself i actually did my schooling in undergrad in the ue so i did my bachelor's in uh, mechanical engineering and then i went on to work uh, for a year in the digital marketing and e-commerce space so i worked for one of the largest e-commerce companies in the middle east and then i had a short stint at a gaming company uh currently i am doing my masters in data science at the university of bath so that's in the uk basically well that's interesting because my story is something similar i did my mechanical engineering and i went into e-commerce and then into digital marketing so oh, wow <laughs> all yeah. similar yeah yeah what a coincidence so uh tell me about something about where are you from in india and what made you decide that you want to move to U- uk well actually i'm from mangalore so my whole family is from mangalore and i've been living in the uae all my life like for around 23 years so the reason i wanted to uh, go to uk is because i wanted to start a new life i wanted to settle in the uk actually mm-hmm. and yeah so i thought a masters would be a good option and my parents also told me like it would be a good option to do your masters pretty early so looking into masters program early and yeah here i am that's interesting so uh, did you consider any other countries or is it was it only uk if so why what's the reason actually i was considering uh, three countries one the first option was us canada and then the uk okay. but the main reason i chose uk is because the fees primarily the fees like in the us and canada is pretty expensive Mm-hmm. So my parents weren't too happy with that even I wasn't too happy with like how the fee structure was there mm-hmm. um but then I saw that there are a lot of good universities in the UK and also there's a uh, there's a good like a big uh, job shortage uh, especially in the IT industry in the UK so I saw it as an opportunity that okay I can do my masters in the UK for like a year and for a lesser cost at a very good university so that's one reason i chose the uk another reason is i really like the culture i really like the place it's like a really good place to settle as well so i was thinking more of in a in a future perspective like how good it good it would be for me in the next 10 to 20 years so yeah that's interesting so uh, do you think it was a good decision to go to the uk yes absolutely it was a good decision like i've been here for around uh 5 months and so many things have happened like i've i feel like i've become more independent a uh, lot more disciplined i've learned a lot of things from my course and i've also learned a lot from the people around me and the culture over here so it's been a really good decision so far uh and and, and i'm really enjoying uh my life over here yeah i agree with you because i i, I share similar experience like we become independent and we get a lot of new experiences that's true yeah definitely yeah yeah so tell us something about like your preparation uh, for ielts or which exam examinations did you prepare and what was the preparation process well the thing is my university they only required a few documents uh, mm-hmm. one was the ielts which is mandatory in the uk mm-hmm. so our uh, in for the ielts score it's a score from 0 to 9 and i managed to score an 8 So the minimum requirement usually for UK universities is a 6. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty easy to get. And then um I had to submit a personal statement or an SOP okay. and then a CV uh, which outlines your uh, academic experience and your work experience as well and also a uh, uh, two letter of recommendations. Okay. So for the IELTS I didn't really have to prepare so much. Um I I just looked through a few YouTube videos and if you just do a couple of sample papers you'll be good for the IELTS. So the IELTS there's usually a speaking test and a writing test and also a grammar test as well and a listening test so four different tests I think. 
Mm-hmm. But it's not too hard. Mm-hmm. Then when it comes to personal statement, I actually took help from a counselor. Mm-hmm. So actually, a counselor like helped me apply. Like I didn't have to sit and apply to each uni because I was busy working. So mm-hmm. the counselor like really helped me like apply to these uni. So I used to give them the documents, and they would apply in my behalf. So that was a good thing. So personal statement, uh, I just looked at formats online really. Uh, but some universities have a specific format but it's basically you're just selling yourself um to the university like why you want to work there you're you're mentioning your motivations of why why do you want to study there not work there mm-hmm. uh and then you can talk about a bit of, about yourself so personal statement is really important and then when it comes to the cv i just mentioned my academy experience and my work experience as well along with some projects and extracurriculars and the letter of recommendations i just took it from my supervisor uh, my uh, thesis supervisor and one of my uh, professor that i was close to okay that's interesting so and sh- tell us more about university of bath so university of bath is actually like one of the best uh, universities in the uk when it comes to teaching excellence and research Mm-hmm. also in in terms of student well being it ranks very highly so mm-hmm. it's actually pretty new compared to some universities like kings or oxford or imperial but they are like g- growing up the ranks very quickly mm-hmm. so uh, the the university of bath is i think ranked 6th or 7th you know in terms when it comes to graduate employability mm-hmm. so that's why a lot of international students find this an attractive option and there's a there's a lovely campus with a lot of greenery there's like a very it's like a there's like very good teaching halls very good professors as well a very like approachable professors so you can talk to them about anything mm-hmm. and even the department of computer science that I'm in is like one of the best in the UK so a lot of employers actually hire uh, graduates from the department of computer science so so like graduates from this department are, are like highly sought after so that's one reason i really like this uni and also we have a uh, good uh, sp- uh, like sports facilities as well mm-hmm. and there's a lot of other facilities like the supermarket and a restaurants so yeah it when it comes to student well being it's like it's like pretty up there it's excellent yeah it's very interesting to know So tell tell us about uh, how was your journey to the UK and like accommodation what what difficulties did you face and how did you solve the problems Well uh, when it comes to like um accommodation I first of all I got my offer letter late so mm-hmm. that caused an issue for me because the problem is uh, accommodation gets filled out very quickly here and postgraduate accommodation can be an issue why because most postgraduates do not stay in the university accommodation so mm-hmm. you need to find like a private accommodation for yourself or uh, there are some student accommodations that are from the uni but uh-huh. away from the university like not like in the university like the university hires a few uh, books a few rooms from a student accommodation and then they give it out to you so there are two options really one was student accommodation and one's the private accommodation so one major difficulty was obviously finding a place because a lot of places were filled mm-hmm. and i had to arrange that really quickly um then yeah i think that was the major issue really just like finding out which places were available mm-hmm. and also uh, in the uk you need to there's a lot of paperwork actually because you need a guarantor you need someone in the uk that uh, needs to be a guarantor mm-hmm. uh, so so yeah there were a lot of issues in in that aspect um but yeah apart from that it was pretty smooth there's a lot of info online usually the universities help you out in such processes so it's not it's not a very very big problem yeah so tell us more about like your emotional struggle because you're staying away from your family going to a new place meeting new people so how was that like well i won't say it's a struggle <laughs> but um, but yeah initially yes it was a struggle because uh, you know a new place a new chapter in your life mm-hmm. and a new country new culture new weather also so where i'm from it's like 40 degrees celsius and here it's like 5 or 10 degrees so that's like a 
huge weather difference so yeah first initial months was pretty hard because i had to cook i had to clean up my own i had to do everything on my own and sort out everything in the first two three months get used to everything Mm-hmm. So that was one emotional struggle that I faced, and sometimes yeah, you do get loneliness. You do feel um, homesick, or you miss your friends. That will happen, and even the weather here does not help, man. It's yeah. like it gets dark at 4 p.m. like in the winter. At 4 p.m. it gets dark. Like just imagine midnight pitch blackness. At 4 p.m. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, your yeah, winter depression is a problem. Like it's an actual thing. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, uh, those were some of the struggles really. But I'm really enjoying it. Like uh, after you get through the first two three months, mm-hmm. uh, thing you get used to everything, and it won't become a real struggle really. Yeah, you get used to it. That's true. After yeah. one year or something like that. Yeah, one year would be perfect. But I took three months, so like I'm enjoying enjoying it here, so it's not a problem. That's great. So, uh, what about the part-time jobs? Like, how do people have to like how do people find it, and how how difficult or easy is it to find part-time jobs? And what about full-time jobs? Actually, when it comes to part-time jobs, there are plenty. Like, there are plenty of part-time jobs that will help cover your expenses. Mm-hmm. So, I know a lot of people who. do part time jobs and they can cover all the expenses like the rent groceries utilities they can cover all that mm-hmm. so uh, usually part time jobs you can find on uh, job sites like indeed online or mm-hmm. any other online site sometimes even the university advertises part time jobs so you can have a look at that as well okay. but most of the part time jobs are in retail like in supermarkets and stuff mm-hmm. or like different stores or it will be more of a receptionist role or a clerk or sometimes you can work as a cook or a chef mm-hmm. in the kitchen or you can work in mcdonald's and fast food so yeah. it's mostly like uh, menial jobs but it pays pretty decently you can you get 10 pounds an hour okay and the thing is students can work for a maximum of 20 hours per week Oh, yeah. So so yeah you can make around 200 pounds per week and in the month you can max out to 800 mm-hmm. or even more if you can get cash in hand jobs as well so so yeah it seems like a pretty reasonable amount to cover expenses and yeah part time yeah. jobs are like pretty good here but yeah. when it comes to full time jobs it's a little bit difficult office like more difficult than part time jobs so the thing is a uh, full time job there are many routes actually so mm-hmm. one is a placement so and then one is a graduate scheme and then there are graduate roles or and then there are internships and you can apply to uh normal jobs as well mm-hmm. okay and uh what are your full time plans like after you finish your study what are your plans so the thing is i have chosen uh the data science program with the placement here mm-hmm. so it doesn't mean the placement here is guaranteed you it's competitive you need to apply and if you get the placement here then you your masters will be considered a two year placement to your sorry to your masters okay so so yeah at the moment i fortunately secured a placement uh because i i i like really thank the career service team because here the career service team is brilliant they really help you from top to bottom if you have any career queries if you have if you want to prepare for an interview or prepare for any sort of a uh, role they will really help you out from start to finish so yeah i mean i'll be working for around 12 months uh mm-hmm. in a new city bristol and um yeah then i'll see what goes on from there i'm looking to take on uh, like, like a graduate role or a graduate scheme or mm-hmm. i also don't mind working at the same company as well after the, after the 12 months yeah that's really great congratulations for your new job and all the best for you thank you you're yeah, welcome So, any advice do you want to give to people who want to study in UK or who want to study in University of Bath? Any advice from you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one advice I can really give is at the start when you're applying and when you're thinking of doing your masters and all, it can get uh, quite stressful mm-hmm. and you can get quite anxious. My advice is like stay calm and like really like research online. Do your like like thoroughly research online, and if you want to know uh, more about a certain program, you can use LinkedIn. So I use LinkedIn to connect with uh, students 
in this course so any graduates or current students in in my masters program mm-hmm. i connected with them on linkedin and, and i asked a lot of questions so i could get a better a, a idea of how the masters actually is because what happens is on websites every university would market themselves the best way possible but if you want the hard truth about any course it's best to ask people who are actually in it or graduated from it so that's what i did so one advice i would really give is like really do your research and use linkedin to connect with your with any graduates or any students in a certain course also another advice i can give is that i see a lot of indian students uh, come here and they focus too much on academics which is okay but the thing is your employers look for an all round personality it's not just about the marks in fact they never even asked when i went when i went for interviews they never really asked me about my marks it was more about um what skills i have what projects i work on on my free time what are my hobbies like they want to know like your extra curriculars as well because they want to see you as a person so you don't have to it's not necess- mandatory to score like 90 or 100% really here it's not that easy also to score mm-hmm. but i would recommend like trying to balance out and try to get involved in as many clubs and societies your university has to offer like like try to network with a lot of people it will really go a long way yeah well said that's that was a great advice i it was a great advice so is there any interesting fact you would you like to share about your university or uk some two yeah actually there's a couple so uh, actually the university of bath is is was actually ranked the best sports university of the year wow so a lot of olympians uh, actually come from this university and uh, the sports training village is like one of the best in the uk so a lot of professional athletes from all around the uk would actually come and train here so they have a lot of things like a full size swimming pool like a lot of tennis courts squash courts basketball courts you name any sport it's probably there i think mm-hmm. so yeah that that's one that's one fact uh, another fact is that the university has around 18000 students mm-hmm. and in that uh, 33% are international students from around 157 nationalities oh wow so yeah so that's the thing like when you go to the university um you'll see a lot of different people from all walks of life different nationalities i've met i've made friends with italians i've made friends with french people i've made friends with a lot of chinese people so yeah it's good to know their culture it's good to know it's good to talk to them and it's like it's like really nice to like um have this good student experience over here that's interesting so thank you very much so it's time to wind up so thank you very much ashley for uh, sharing us your insights and your experience and i'm sure that anybody who's watching this video it will be a great help for them and uh, guys please uh, like this video and please don't forget to subscribe this channel and we will come up with more interesting facts more interesting content and please don't forget to comment below which college or university you want us to cover so that we can make an, another video so thank you very much so see you soon until then take care bye